Good morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Sandra Kerr and as part of my stewardship here today, it is my pleasure and my privilege to not only serve as your chair of council, but also to remind you of some of the activities and events that we are uh, having here at Maple Grove. The first one is to notice that today's service is actually called the Sacrament of Baptism, celebrating Mary Bell. And I think Mary Bell actually <laughs> has been baptized once, so we're really doing two things today. We're having a baptism and we're celebrating Mary Bell. <laughs> Um, the other thing to just tell you very quickly is that you will see all the different activities and events happening listed in the Pew's News, which is just in front of you where the hymn books are. So I hope you'll take a chance to read those. In particular, I'd like to uh, remind you, if you have an opportunity, to take a look at the stone sculptures outside. And, uh, and if you can, actually purchase one or maybe bring friends to buy one or two uh, because um, not only are they magnificent, uh, they're done by uh, Zimbabwean uh, um, artisans and sculptors, uh, but they're also, we as, as a church, are receiving a commission on each of the sales that will help to support our Syrian refugee family, which is indeed a very unique and wonderful way to help us fund a very wonderful project. Other than that, I would now like to uh, remind you that we are going to take a moment to celebrate and to um, prepare ourselves in the presence in the heart and soul and mind around the presence of God as we listen to the prelude and then we'll open with hymn number 766 as the deer pants for the water. Two of the second generation of Mary's choirs. So both Amanda and Sarah Dillon and Kirsty and uh, Kylie's the mom, um, uh, uh, Cameron Silcox, grew up singing in our choirs. We even have the godmothers, Jody Amy, sang in our choir. choir. So um, this is a special way of marking the many years, many generations of young people whose lives Mary influenced. So we come to baptism as a sign of God's grace on these two beautiful children that God has loved since before they were conceived and will love long after they have died. Uh, we'll walk with them, we'll be with them throughout their lives. They have loving families and we represent the loving Christians that they can count on uh, to nurture them in the faith. I'm going to ask the parents and godparents to please stand. Oops. Oh, sorry. I decided to put that afterwards when the children leave. I forgot to mention that, Mary. That's... <laughs> she has to roll with the punches. <laughs> no, I never follow the script. I work on it for hours, but I never follow it. <laughs> so turn and face the congregation just in the pew. And we have some questions. We all have questions to answer. Do you believe in God, source of love, in Jesus Christ, love in human form, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power? I do, by the grace of God. Will you follow in the way of Jesus Christ, resisting oppression and evil, seeking justice, and witnessing to God's love for all creation? I will. Will you join with your brothers and sisters in this community of faith and elsewhere to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? I will with God's help. And now will the families please stand? Family. Yep, that means you, George. <laughs> We have a question to which we answer, I will, with God's help. Will you play, pray for Ariella and Kira being baptized? Encourage them by your words and actions, and walk with them in the way of Jesus. And now the congregation, please stand. As the people of God at Maple Grove United Church, do you commit yourselves to support and nurture Ariella and Kira within a community which worships God, loves and serves others, seeks justice, and resists evil? We do by the grace of God. Please be seated.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life, and within it, the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. Through water, you led the children of Israel to freedom. May your spirit be upon us and what we do, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now Sandra will introduce our families. <clears throat> for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism, we welcome into the family of God today Ariella, Laura, Dylan, Ravarola, daughter of Amanda and Dylan and Jason Rivarola, granddaughter of Patricia and Edward Dillon and Jeanette Rivarola, goddaughter of Sarah Dillon and Christopher Rivarola. Oh, going that way. <laughs> Name this child. Ariella, Laura, Dylan. Hello, sweetie. Oh, biggest smile. Yes. Yes. You like everybody. Yes. Ariella Laura Dillon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the sign of the cross, you are marked as Christ forever. And now these are all your brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> she's really she's really enjoying you you must be wearing your your best clothes <laughs> congratulations she says, that was fun. Can we do it again? <laughs> okay. And now for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism, we welcome into the family of God today, Kiera Kirsty Taylor McCready, daughter of Kylie and Adam McCready, granddaughter of Norma June Wilson and George Pasher, Wendy and Paul McCready and Colin Silcox and Sandy Lemieux, Goddaughter of Jody Amy and Jeff Strong, Andrew and Andrea Morin. She is asleep. Oh, <laughs> rude awakening about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Name this child. Kira Christy Taylor. Kira Christy Taylor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. With the sign of the cross, you are marked as Christ forever. There, yes, there. Just woke up. She woke up to a, to a kiss. Hey, and a big yawn. Isn't she a cutie? <laughs> Oh, doing all her tricks. Hey, hey, is she a cutie? I saw her when she was just a couple of days old. Not even, not even that, because she was still in the hospital. Hey? Oh, now she's holding her hands together like she's praying. Oh. Hey, two perfect babies. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ariella and Kira have been received into the Christian Church and Maple Grove United Church. Would you welcome them by saying amen? Amen. And now we're going to sing When He Cometh. 
Mary chose all the hymns today, and this one was one that was popular when Mary and perhaps some of us were young. She started playing the organ, as I said, in her church when she was 12 years old. So I can imagine her playing this uh, piece uh, a long, long time ago when her feet hardly reached the pedals. <laughs> now is the acceptable time to offer our gifts to you, holy God. May they be used to remove obstacles which keep others from knowing your grace, experiencing your healing, or being filled with your hope. Now is the time to give thanks for our blessings, praying they will be used to bless others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When the Ark of the Covenant was finally brought into the temple, it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to God. And the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to God. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of God, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of God filled the house of God. O oh, sing to God a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to God with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before God. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to God in your hearts, giving thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the gods. of her sons. Uh, the other two are uh, Whistler and Germany. Uh, but dad, I think, has entered the three digits, hasn't he? He's 100 last October. So if you scoot over, Brandon's coming up. Her grandbaby is here. So uh, this is the best Father's Day, right? What, what, what a great Father's Day. So you can scoot over, and then Brendan can be here. And there's the next generation. And now Pat Dillon, one of our choir uh, parents, extraordinaire. Oh, thank you, Maura. I had the great uh, honor to pay tribute to Mary in uh, 2004 and to thank her for her incredible contributions to Maple Grove. Um, the youth, the music, the worship, the celebration, and I'm very, very honored to represent the choir parents over the years. Again, here today, Mary. 
I first met Mary in the early 1990s when our daughters, Amanda and Sarah, uh, joined the Koinea Choir. Sarah was a little young, she really should have been a cherub, but I pleaded with Mary to please let Sarah become a member of the Koinea Choir so I didn't have to come to church twice on, on Thursday night because the practices were at a little bit different time. So that was um, really the first of many, many times I witnessed and experienced uh, Mary's key uh, qualities of understanding, tolerance, unselfishness, and her willingness to accommodate the needs of others with great generosity of spirit. And we, we've heard about that earlier today for music. Thursday evenings were wonderful, especially when the Koinea Choir was preparing for singing Sundays. Mary was always able to find songs and children's hymns that suited the interest and abilities of the group as well as the occasion. Practice was fun and there was much laughter. Mary was firm when she needed to be, was always fair, helped the children develop pride in their accomplishments. During my time as choir mom, the annual season finale, the musical play, was for me the highlight of the year. Yes, the Christmas music and the mass choir pieces during the Festival of Song were wonderful, and nothing can compare with the fun and inspirational music Dan Hynek would find for the combined choirs during the year. But the play brought out extra dimensions in the children, Judith Drake, Mary, and me. Mary found different plays each year, again matching the interests and composition of the choir to the story. Mary assigned roles in a way that was sensitive to the abilities and needs of the individuals. Many times, shy children had the chance to shine through the performance. I was very happy to work with uh, Mary. Um, one year, we um, toppled the Tower of Babel, right here, uh, in Babel in Babel. Other performances included Salty, Sherman on the Mount, Moses and the Freedom Fanatics, O Jonah, Francis of Assisi, to name just a few. And it was so much fun making the costumes and the sets. We really had an amazing time. On top of all the extra of practice and rehearsal time, Mary managed to organize food and treats, and the dress rehearsal day always ended with a game to reward the children for their hard work. I miss my time with Mary and Judith. Unfortunately, demands of business took me away from being choir mom, and I was not there sometimes for the final performance. Fortunately, Ted, Amanda, and Sarah, now grown into young women, were able to step in and help out, and we became the choir family of the Dillons, not just me. Mary always trusted that everything would work out wonderfully on the day of the performance, even though sometimes in the dress rehearsal, things would go wrong. Notes of thanks for their special contributions to the success of the place, and every September we received an invitation welcoming us, welcoming us back to the new season. Mary never forgot Judith or me, and at the end of the year, her gifts of appreciation showed how much you thought of our help. Kind, generous, gracious, giving, patient, supportive, and a friend. For two years during my time as choir mom, Mary introduced a new experience that I'm sure the participating children will never forget. I know I won't. We attended a one-day workshop with the Toronto Children's Chorus and another and other invited choirs from around the GTA. We practiced for weeks before the Saturday event. This ensured we were familiar with the music and the expectation of the choir mistress, Jean Bartle. Each year I was moved to tears by the beauty and quality of the singing and bursting with pride in the performance of our children. Another gift Mary gave to the Koinea, Hand Me Down My Silver Trumpet, became a favorite song and the children considered it a special reward to sing it during practice long after the workshop had passed. Mary, you continued to share your many talents and love for music with the congregation and the cherub and koinea children of Maple Grove long after we were gone. Ted, Amanda, Sarah, and I join with all of Maple Grove in thanking you for years of wonderful memories. 
growing our love for music under your guidance and inspiration and for your wonderful dear friendship with great fondness from all of us, Mary. Wonderful. Well, Mary, I want you to turn around and look. I'd like to ask uh, those of you who have sung in Mary's choirs to please stand. Oh, it's a moment. And uh, I'm going to invite you to come forward, and we have a special presentation. Rebecca's conducting. like to get a group hug and a group maybe a group hug and a group picture <laughs> far more comfortable sitting over there than standing up here but I will do my best <laughs> they make me feel so old mm. they're so <laughs> but really they've kept me young <laughs> my whole life has revolved around children and music uh, becoming the organist in my village church when I was 12 playing bassoon in my high school band in my village orchestra where Bob and I met We'd never have met otherwise because we were in two different places. Teaching school and piano and leading children's choirs and playing the organ here. I have been truly fortunate to continue my love of children and music in such a warm, loving, fun place where there is so much support 
respect and cooperation with a positive approach to any challenge. We are a team from the wonderful staff to various music directors, all who have been all who have brought their talents and special gifts to our choir and music program, and to so many parent volunteers who are a valuable and much needed asset to our choirs. We all work seamlessly together and we enjoy each other. Working with the children has given me so much pleasure. They have energized and challenged me, kept me young, and given me so much joy and made me so proud of them over and over. Playing the organ has been equally rewarding and fulfilling. Being part or pipe organ, it has been fun and challenging to play and has given me countless hours of pleasure and enjoyment. This time last year, I had no inkling that I would be standing here saying goodbye. It has been a difficult decision made only in January after much soul searching. Although there have been signs, my organ shoes are wearing out, <laughs> my binders are falling apart, I've worn off the finish on both ends of the organ bench sliding on and off so many times. <laughs> However, the carpet seems to be holding up really well. <laughs> I've learned a lot here. I've enjoyed working with everyone. I've particularly enjoyed working with Dan. And I have to tell you that he's taught me a few things. Mainly, well, one thing is to rehearse with a uh, metronome, which actually broke while my husband was in Germany, so I haven't been able to use it lately. And um, using a binder. It's really hard to play music with one page upside down. <laughs> it's challenging to play when one piece blew off the organ rack while I was away and I had to fake it. Um, what else? Oh yes, I... <laughs> One of our anthems, I had to have two rows of paper, about five sheets long, on one in front of the other one, and I was sitting right here playing the piano. And when I peeled the top one off to put on the floor so I could read the second sheets, the second sheet fell off too. <laughs> so I learned to tape it on, but that was before Dan told me to use a binder, so. <laughs> um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity to be a part of the life of Maple Grove United Church. And thank you for being a part of my life. I will cherish Maple Grove memories for the rest of my life. Thank you. As, as a chair of worship and music, but just as a huge fan, more than anything, I, I have a few things that the, the congregation and everyone here has been uh, w wanting to do something for you for your retirement besides all of this. So we have a few things. One uh, is practical. We thought, because last time one of her, her children lives in Germany and she went there and apparently she had to take like six or seven books with her because she likes to read and said, never again, I don't want to ever, ever, ever have to take books. So we thought we would give you a practical gift. And here you have, it's, it's an e-reader. So she... <laughs> But, but of course we didn't want to only be practical and we wanted to give her something that perhaps she would look at and can always remember Maple Grove, even though she's not really going away, she's just going away from the organ. <laughs> she, she will still be around. Uh, and something that actually was very fortuitous that, that the, uh, the Zimbabwe sculpture exhibit was on and we heard that you were admiring some of the sculptures. Come on, this way. Oh, my favorite one. Oh. Mary 
loves to garden, so this piece is entitled Flower. Oh. And, and not only worship and music would like to give you, sorry, not only just the congregation, but the, but the prayer, uh, the uh, caring team has something for you. Oh, in oh, everyone we would like to present this because for everything you do there's just something a little bit more here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one more thing but we'd like you to sit back down the choir has a present this for you we did give her we did give her a gift that our choir told you but we have a dedication that we'd like to sing for you Mary. Do you want to play? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Would you like to sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've said many times to the choir, I think we're going to be at a church, it's much like the hotel California. <laughs> yeah. Check out any time you want. <laughs> never, never leave. <laughs> Any pleasure, then what would it be? Search the whole world, high and low, for an answer over the mountains and down to the sea. Would you wish for youth and beauty, or wealth to make a show? Or power and position and strength. Oh no, for your youth it will vanish and beauty will fade and your wealth and position are all just a passing parade.
best day, the most special day of the Mary didn't want uh, uh, any kind of uh, fuss made, <laughs> so this isn't fuss, uh, but uh, she gets her wish because she is actually playing next week, um, and I'm sure it'll be a much quieter service. Uh, let's uh, finish with uh, singing For the Beauty of the Earth, 226 in your hymn book, and then we will say a blessing and then sing Hallie Hallie. And I'm going to um, ask that maybe the baptism families and, the, um, and Mary's family, if you'll go out first so we can get them. On this day, let us leave with thanksgiving in our hearts. We leave to share God's love with everyone we meet. On this day, let us go to speak of what Jesus has done. May we pour grace upon grace into all the lives around us. On this day, let us go to share what we believe. Let us sing glad songs of the Spirit to our silenced world. <laughs>